Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be showing you how you can create a drop-down list in Excel. Now, drop-down lists are very handy if you want to uh, standardize your data entry. Um, so in this example, we're going to be doing a bookkeeping template and how you can use drop-down lists to standardize your data entry for your bookkeeping, but it can use for all kinds of different things and we'll get into that a bit more towards the end of the video. So instead of just entering information loosely, what you can do is create a drop-down list to lock in the available options for entering certain bits of information into cells. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a bookkeeping template. So I'll just enter the titles of the columns here that we're going to use. So we're going to have date, details, um, we're going to have account and the amount. So let's just say we've got some transactions we have to enter here and we bought some fuel and this is motor vehicle expenses in the account and the amount was $150 and what I might actually do is swap these two around here so we'll have the account on the end there and then let's say on the 20th of August we had um, some accounting fees 300 and the account is accounting and then we had um, we bought some stationery and that goes to the office supplies account. Now this works fine, there's nothing wrong with this, but there are opportunities to standardize and then when you standardize, there are opportunities to automate. So instead of just entering anything into the account fields here, what we're going to do is create a drop-down list so there's only set options for what you're allowed to select for your account type. So what we're going to go do here is enter a new tab and this is where we're going to set up our chart of accounts. So first we'll do the income amounts. Say we have two types of income, sales A and sales B. I'll leave a gap there. And then we're going to have our expense accounts. So office supplies, motor vehicle, accounting, utilities, and so on. And then for the last account, we'll have a miscellaneous. So the reason I've put the gaps in here is that these are the cells that we're going to reference in our dropdown. I've left a gap here so that we know when the income accounts end and the expense accounts begin. And I've left gaps down here because these are open options that we can fill in with other account types as we move along. So I've left that there so we can fill them out later as we build the accounts list out. Back to our spreadsheet here with our transactions. I'm going to delete this because the problem with this is you could have motor vehicle here and then down here somewhere uh, you might make a spelling mistake or you might call it somewhat something else, car expenses. And the problem that we've got here, when you have full freedom to enter whatever you want, it is very hard to automate because we're then we're not able to set up formulas to uh, summarize this raw data when everything, you know, there has to be a uniform set of accounts in order to do that. Because when we set up a, for instance, a summary page with the profit and loss, we are going to use a sum if formula. And I made another video about this of how to use sum ifs to summarize raw data for accounting. But we're going to use a sum if formula and it needs to reference a particular name in a cell. And that is difficult to do if you've got all these different non-standardized 
versions of the same thing. So we need to standardize the chart of accounts names here. And then when we have a standard set of names, so you only have a certain choice of account type or name that you can use, then it is very easy to uh, then create a summary tab using a summary formula that references a specific name for an account. And then we can automate our raw data into a profit and loss statement. So it's, it makes a big difference here in the amount of time you're going to spend in chasing up errors and so forth. It's a much smarter way to work. So instead of entering in these account names here is whatever we want to enter it to, we choose our chart of accounts here over in a different tab. And we can enter in more names in here. You know, this could be uh, rent, wages, whatever it may be. And then in here, we're going to enter a formula. So we go data, data validation, data validation again. And we're going to say validation criteria allow list because we're creating a drop down list. And the source, the source of the list, we're going to go over into our tab here and highlight the source. Okay. And now you can see here we've got this little drop down box. So, what happens now is when you try and type in anything, if it's not in the source list here, you get an error message. The value you entered is not valid. That's good. You have to select the drop down list now. And you can see here we've got our income accounts up the top. You got a space, then you got your expense accounts down here, and the empty items that we haven't filled in yet down to the miscellaneous category. So fuel is a motor vehicle expense, and then all you have to do is go. Well, actually, we'll just select it as a blank for now, and to fill it down, it's just a matter of copy and paste. And then you can see we've got all these drop-down boxes here where we pasted the validation so fuel is motor vehicle accounting is the accounting account stationary is office supplies and then let's say on the 21st of the 8th um, details uh, Let's say R. Smith is our landlord, paid $1,500 in rent, that goes to the rent account. AGL is our uh, electricity provider. That goes to utilities. And here I'm going to say MV repairs, MV for motor vehicle, and that's a motor vehicle expense. So you go through, you enter all your info here, and then what you can do is create a summary tab with a profit and loss, and you have your, you know, your sales A here. sales B, etc., and then all your expenses, motor vehicle, accounting, so forth. And then what we, we can do, we can use the SUMIF formula that references the account names that we set up in the data validation on the data entry sheet. So we need to enter our range, our criteria, and our sum range. So our range, is here our criteria we reference the chart of account sheet motor vehicle our sum range is here and then as you can see we got motor vehicle 700 let's go have a look and see where that's coming from you got 150 here 
550 there, some 700. So as you can see, once we have standardized the options for selecting your account type using data validation in a drop down list, then you are able to automate a profit and loss statement or any kind of report by using a sum if formula. So it is a pretty powerful way really, and a pretty simple way to automate your entry to make sure it's accurate to remove human error and just to produce reports in a much timely manner when you are working out of Excel. Now, of course, this is a bookkeeping accounting context, but you can use drop down lists for just about anything. So you, let's say you've got, let's run it over the top of the data we've already used. Let's say you're running a pro, uh, your uh, income and expenses transaction log here, but now you want to set up a cost center for uh, location, which is like which district, for instance, the uh, the cost center relates to? Is it the North District, the South District, whatever? If you want to look at which parts of your business are performing more than others by ge geographical location, but also which geographical locations are costing more than others. So let's set up a new list for location. And we're going to have uh, Central north south west east and we're going to go data validation data validation i'm going to set up a list and the source is here so as you can see guys, very simple, just a couple of steps there, a few clicks and you're away. And now we can set up our location. So this could have been central and then that this motor vehicle, well, we have to copy it down first. And then this motor vehicle expense could have been in the Southern district. So then what you're able to do, you can run a PNL based on overall expenses but then you can run sub P&Ls or cost center reports that pull information by not only the uh, uh, the type of expense but also the location of the expense so you can run a P&L for central run a different P&L for north different cost center reports for each location and of course you can put in here just about anything you want as far as accounts, location goes. It might be uh, the salesperson's name. So you can see which uh, salesperson was making more sales than the other. And obviously there are programs that do this um, that will have subscription fees attached to it, but Excel was something that uh, you have a lot more control over your output. You can build a report from scratch. And plus, of course, if you bought the program outright, then it costs you nothing and some people just prefer working in Excel. So it gives you a lot of opportunity here to create all kinds of reports, to automate, uh, to standardize, and just to have full flexibility over what you wanna see as the output for uh, your management reporting. Now that's just about it for the video, guys. I don't wanna waffle on too much. I think you've probably got the idea. Uh, if you want some help with some training, uh, hit us up in the description. I'll put a link there where you can book in a session, we can organize a training session, or if you want some help setting up some kind of template like this to record uh, your uh, bookkeeping transactions or any kind of data for your business, we can help with that as well. And we can get it all nice, standardized, automated, so that then you can take it away and you can use this and you don't have to worry about paying monthly subscription fees to a, a some kind of software provider. So if you want any help with that, hit us up. Other than that, I hope you learned something from the video and we hope to see you next time.